All right, let's get away from some of the blood and work physically and get into the uh, love gone awry here. Johnny Depp out of Virginia lawsuit against his former wife, uh, Amber Heard, for $50 million, claiming that he was the thing. So it's a libel case based upon an article that was written in the Washington Post in 2018, where Ms. Heard had made representations indicating uh, inferentially that Johnny Depp uh, was a, an abuser, a domestic violence individual, sexual, and she talked about sexual assault in that article. So it is uh, all the fanfare out there in Virginia. So of course, we have our very own Anjanette Levy with us because uh, nobody better than her to be on boots on the ground, like so many of our reporters, talking about the ins and outs of a case like this. Anjanette, I'm so glad we're not talking about quadruple murders or attempted murder or whatever, but certainly it's a fascinating case, especially uh, when we look at the permutation that because Johnny Depp is a public figure, under the libel laws, the right. standard is higher. You got to show actual malice or a reckless disregard for the truth. Uh, it's very similar to the Sarah Palin case. Anjanette, tell us what you think's going on out there. What's it look like? Hey, well, good afternoon to you, Bob. You know, we're here in front of the Fairfax County Courthouse where jury selection is underway in the defamation case between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Amber Heard, of course, is countersuing Johnny Depp. He is suing her for $50 million. She's countersuing for $100 million, claiming that Depp actually um, defamed her as well. So um, she is claiming that uh, he called her a perjurer and a hoax artist and uh, that she is entitled to damages because of that. So uh, as I mentioned, the jury selection is underway right here, right now in the Fairfax County Courthouse. And this is all traces back to that 2018 op-ed in the Washington Post in which uh, Amber Heard wrote that she had basically survived domestic violence. She didn't name Johnny Depp, but Johnny Depp says that doesn't matter, that everyone knew who she was referring to and what she was referring to. So Depp filed that lawsuit a short time later. He claims that he lost acting roles because he had been labeled a, a domestic abuser and, and basically a wife beater. So um, it's an interesting case, as you mentioned, Bob, because John, Johnny Depp is a public figure, as is Amber Heard. They're both public figures. So they will both have to prove uh, that there was actual malice here. And we had talked to Gene Rossi, um, former federal prosecutor. He practices right here in Virginia and is actually a part of a defamation case, uh, representing somebody in a defamation case in this very courthouse right now. And he told me uh, that basically this is a very high hurdle that Johnny Depp is going to have to meet with this defamation case. And then Amber Heard, on the other hand, also has um, you know a high hurdle here because she is a public figure as well. And uh, Jean really likened this to kind of a food fight because all of the dirty laundry is going to come out in this case. Um, so Bob, you know, Amber Heard had actually posted on Instagram recently, uh, just in the last couple of days, saying that she was going offline uh, for a few weeks. This trial is expected to last six weeks. And she said she would be doing so because she's going to be facing Johnny Depp in court. She said that she never named him, um, but that she has paid a high price for challenging men in a position of power. Johnny Depp, meanwhile, maintains that he never abused Amber Heard, that he never uh, punched her or hit her in any way, and that he is innocent uh, of these allegations that she's made against him. Uh, so it's very interesting. And we should point out, uh, you know, there have been a lot of people saying and asking, why is this case being held, or why is this case, why is this lawsuit being filed in the Commonwealth of Virginia? And neither Depp nor Heard live in Virginia. And really the answer to that is pretty simple. It's because the Washington Post is published here in Fairfax County. There are servers for the paper here in Fairfax County. And that is why this defamation suit is being brought here. Interestingly enough, Johnny Depp is not suing the Washington Post. He is only suing his ex-wife, Amber Heard. So Bob, we'll send it back to you. Yeah, interesting, and Jeanette, because, uh, you know, there are a lot of people who think that that Sullivan standard, that Supreme, United States Supreme Court decision that makes public figures much more difficult for them to be able to sue should be lessened. Uh, and there's, there's a concerted mm -hmm. effort out there to say basically public figures are getting lamb blasted and libeled and slandered all the time. And they should have more access to the courts in terms of a lower legal standard. But you are very prescient, and Jeanette, as always, because you talked about your um, interview with Gene Rossi, my, my man. Uh, love Gene Rossi, and you did that interview. So let's take a quick look at his point of view. We'll be right back with you, Angela.
Well, because Johnny Depp is a public figure, not a public official, he's a public figure, the burden of proof uh, for the plaintiff, and that's the uh, hurdle that Sarah Palin had, uh, the burden of proof is much tougher for a plaintiff like Johnny Depp. Uh, he has to prove that his former wife, Amber Heard, uh, maliciously, with uh, reckless disregard for the truth, made an allegation that he essentially uh, had, had uh, engaged in wife beating and domestic abuse. Um, it doesn't matter if she didn't name him specifically in her op-ed, doesn't matter. Everybody knew about whom she was writing, uh, but that's the high hurdle. The other thing I wanna add, and this shows the weakness, I think, of the plaintiff's case, uh, Depp's case, they did not sue the Washington Post. They sued just Amber Heard, which suggests to me that the plaintiffs know that if they had sued the Post, uh, the Post would have the defense that Depp's a public figure and the burden is higher. It would be sort of um, the uh, Sarah Palin redux case. You know, a and Jeanette, I, I uh, uh, you know, there, I, there could be a million reasons why they didn't sue the Post, but I'm confused. Maybe you can help me out here. The same standard if you sued the post would be the same standard uh, with regard to the Sullivan, you know, uh, rule of law here as it applies to all the parties. I mean, because they're public figures, you have to show reckless disregard or actual malice. Uh, perhaps they didn't sue the post because they didn't want to have the army of lawyers that the post would have and fight a two front war as opposed to as opposed to going directly with the person who made the statements. What are your thoughts? I really think, Bob, they didn't sue the Washington Post because it is so difficult uh, to sue a media entity. And this was a, an opinion piece. This was not a reporter from the Washington Post writing this story and making allegations about Johnny Depp without naming him. But this wasn't one of the staff members of the Washington Post. They simply published this in the opinion section. Uh, it was an editorial talking about a matter of um, great public interest, which would be domestic violence and sexual assault. So uh, I think that's why they didn't sue the Washington Post. It is incredibly difficult, and I think we've seen that time after time, uh, for someone to go up against a media organization and uh, to claim that they've been defamed or slandered, libeled, what have you, uh, by a media organization. And so really, if you think about it too, Johnny Depp's beef is not really with the Washington Post. His beef is with... Amber Heard. And we saw in London when he sued the son, the, the laws are different over there. He lost that case. So he would definitely, I think, more than likely lose this case. He's not named. This was not written by somebody working for the Post. It was an opinion piece in their paper. So I, I think it's a much different type of thing than had, uh, you know, the Washington Post come out and published something calling D Johnny Depp a, a domestic abuser. Yeah, that's a really good point, and Jeanette. Uh, let me, I see behind you are a cadre, I assume, of just a few cameras and media that are there. And then some dudes hanging, it's holding up a sign. So do you have any opportunity, what are they saying out there? I'm trying to read what he has on that sign. Uh, obviously a lot of uh, attention on the case. What's the feel like? Well, you know, there there is quite a bit of, uh, well, we've got somebody holding a Justice for Johnny sign, of course, um, and there are uh, quite a few media entities here. I think everybody's gone to lunch, uh, but it was a lot, it was much more crowded this morning as people were awaiting the arrival of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Uh, they were brought in through a separate entrance. They did not come in through the front entrance of the courthouse. So fans who had lined up uh, really didn't get to see uh, get a glimpse of, uh, you know, Amber Heard or Johnny Depp. I do want to mention that most of the people we've seen out here, as far as fans go, are here in support of Johnny Depp. They believe that these allegations that Amber Heard has made in the past are not true. Uh, they do not believe that he um, is somebody who has engaged in acts of domestic violence, and they are here to support him. Um, I've only seen one woman who was here from Los Angeles in support of uh, Johnny Depp, and she was here with uh, what appeared to be a child and a couple of other people. But the most of the people that we've seen out here are here supporting Johnny Depp. And I want to say that they've been actually holding these pirate flags. Uh, they're kind of waving these little pirate flags. And they said that that's something that they do to show support for him. 
Okay, well, uh, I guess that makes sense. Anjanette Levy, the Renaissance woman <laughs> at the Law of Crime Network. One minute she's out in Virginia, then she's in the New York studio hosting. Anjanette, always do a great job. Thank you so much. All right, well, thanks so much, Bob.